Hello VC Kevins, Mrs. Jarabi here, and we're going to be looking at aspirin synthesis. This is chapter 14, uh, chapter 14.1, as part of our organic chemical pathways series of classes. And uh, we're going to be looking at aspirin, otherwise known as aspro, and we have a question for you to start off with. So when you see the question, just like the previous class, give yourself 30 seconds, I'll count down for you. Try and find the right answer. This is multiple choice out of the 2010 uh, chemistry exam number one. Ready for it? Here we go. The time starts now. Ten seconds down. And another 10 seconds. And time. All right, did you get this answer? Did you manage to find out that which reaction was incorrect? Let's have a look at them. Uh, why is it not A? Well, sodium hydroxide, the hydroxyl group will displace um, the halo group, the chlorine group there. And so the hydroxyl group will displace here, and you can see it there. And when the chlorine jumps off, it joins up with the positive sodium ion, and it makes sodium chloride salts. So that's okay. Um, it doesn't. We don't see the pro, the extra product, so the sodium chloride here, and that's okay. It's still not the right answer because the reaction is still correct. That is that the hydroxyl group replaces the halo group, the chlorine group. Uh, let's have a look at C. Why is it not C? Well, in an acidic environment with ethanol and an oic acid, you expect to make an ester made, and that is correct. You can see that an ester has been made over here, C double O C, C double O C, and that is in an acidic environment, an alcohol and a carboxylic acid makes a ester. That is a correct um, reaction. And when, remember, esterification is also a condensation reaction, and there should be water. That is a product of this, but we don't get to see that. Um, but that's okay. So both of those have products that you don't see, but the reactions are correct. Uh, D, in the presence of water and an acidic environment, we have an addition reaction where the double bond breaks and OH and O and H are added separately. The OH from the water, the H from the water, and the H from the H plus are added on either side of the double bond. So this is a correct reaction, which makes B incorrect. Because what you see here is that when hydrochloric acid breaks the double bond, where does the chlorine add? Does it add where the double bond is on either side? No. It actually does a substitution, which is really odd. Because as soon as the double bond breaks, it'll want to attach to one of, to the hal to the halogen group, the chlorine and the hydrogen there. So this is incorrect because it hasn't attached either here or here, or here, or here. Um, it's actually attached in an odd spot. Uh, on the exam, uh, approximately 69% of students got that one correct. And hopefully you're one of those 69%. If you don't understand how that works, go back to this question um, and have a look at the assessor report. So we're looking at uh, aspirin synthesis today, and um, there's a bit of a meme there. Uh, first world problems meme. Sometimes you get a headache from something quite annoying, and aspirin could be the thing that gives you that kind of pain relief. Um, aspirin is a analgesic. So the learning intention for today is that students, you guys will be able to describe the uses of aspirin and its synthesis from ethanoic acid and salicylic acid. It's not salicyclic acid, it's salicylic acid. So aspirin is made up of those two things, ethanoic acid and salicylic acid. And so, uh, by the end of this class, you should be able to do this at a basic level. You should be able to describe the optimal pathway for the synthesis of aspirin. Remember, optimal pathway from the last class is the one that takes the least amount of steps, least amount of waste products, and is the fastest, most efficient, best cost, best cost efficiency reaction you can have. And the second is this, that you should be able to describe and ex discuss and explain the considerations of aspirin's solubility, the difference between Acetyl salicylic acid and salicylic acid. What are the differences between the two? 
here are some tips for you, as always. Um, for these uh, online classes, make sure that you have your textbook open and, and watch and listen as you go along. Uh, feel free to pause and review content if you don't understand it. Um, if it's getting too much to handle, press pause and um, try and figure it out for yourself. Make sure you write down the learning intention success criteria and achieve them. Uh, one tip that I would give you with the success criteria is if you can make, if you can actually write an answer for each of the success criteria that answers it, then you've actually achieved it. So give that a go. Make sure you write down important things like summary notes. Um, I haven't been able to check your notes at the moment, but I hope that you have been writing summary notes and not just listening to the lecture and going, oh, I'll remember it all by the, by the exam. Your understanding increases greatly when you actually write down notes. And make sure you answer you, write down your uh, further questions and discussions on Edmodo. And these slides will always, always be available online there. So we're going to look at uh, aspirin synthesis and what is it? Well, aspirin um, is, a, is a drug, which you probably know, and the creation of this drug um, all occurred during to the, due to the understanding and use of organic reaction pathways. In 1897, Felix Hoffmann, a German guy, the guy on the right there, was the first guy to uh, synthesize a chemically pure form of aspirin. And as I've mentioned before, what is it and how does it work? It is a drug, and drugs are substances that cause, that alters a chemical process in the body. Um, aspirin does that by, um, well, uh, being a painkiller. Aspirin has its origins from a naturally occurring salicin found in certain plants. Um, and this goes back to uh, before Common Era, before Christ, back in BC times, where um, people would chew on certain, these certain plants because it helped them get through the, the pains of childbirth and other um, pain-related um, uh, injuries and um, outcomes. So back in the day, people used to chew on these plants um, because it gave these analgesic properties. That is, that it masks, masks pain. And it's only been in the recent past 200 years that we've actually figured out what that chemical is. And that was salicin. And you can see where it, that's the name of the chemical inside those plants. But we actually make acetyl salicylic acid. And that's the pure stuff there. And that's called aspirin. There's the acetyl group over here, like acetic acid, ethanoic acid, acetyl. That's the acetyl group. And the salicylic acid bit is this bit here. Okay. And it is actually an esterification reaction. Esterification is a reaction between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So let's have a look at how it's made. The first step, like I said, it starts off with ethanoic acid. Um, but when we do this um, esterification reaction, we don't actually use an um, an alkanol. We don't actually use straight ethanol. What we do is we, re we react ethanoic acid with itself to make ethanoic anhydride. Anhydrous, anhydride means without water, and you can see that the ethanoic acid has been, had water taken out of it. It's a condensation reaction. And ethanoic anhydride is what we react with salicylic acid to make aspirin. And the reasons for that you can find in your book. So once we've made ethanoic anhydride, then we react it with salicylic acid, and you can see that it's that esterification reaction. There's your, um, it's almost an esterification reaction. Um, you have the OH group and the CH3CO group there. And as they bond together, ethanoic acid is produced, and acetyl salicylic acid, or aspirin, is created as well. And that is almost the end of the class. So uh, what I want you to do right now is to actually read through the through 14.1 and answer questions 1, extension 1 and extension 2 on page 225 of the Heinemann 2 textbook. And make sure you create summary notes for that chapter, 14.1. For the uh, success criteria number 2, explaining the considerations of solubility and the difference between acetyl salicylic acid and salicylic acid, um, you need to do those yourselves. So actually read through the question, read through the textbook and find out the answer and answer those questions yourself. If you're wondering why this class was so quick, and you're probably wondering, hoping that I give you more details, the reason why is because when you get back uh, for term two, uh, there will be a SAC, 
And the stack is all about aspirin synthesis. You're going to be going on an excursion, creating, asp uh, creating aspirin, and writing up a report about it as well. It's part of your extended experimental investigation. And uh, the next online class uh, will explain how your stack's going to work. And so you're going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of understanding aspirin. I've just given you a bit of a taster and the fundamentals, all very important and part of the study design, and you will explain, explore it further on the next class. All right, so that's the end of the class. Study well, make sure you uh, submit uh, any questions on Enmodo, and work hard, work well, and that'll be all.